Hi, I'm Stella V, and come cook with me. Today we're going to be doing risotto. Now, risotto can be an intimidating word, but I am going to show you how, with just a few simple ingredients and your instant pot, we're going to make a restaurant quality meal in just 20 minutes. And if you like what you see today, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment telling me that you subscribed, and I will reply. I grew up with risotto and I was at my mother's knee when she would show me how to prepare it the traditional way and yes it does involve a lot of stirring and careful attention which is probably why people find it a little intimidating. But with these ingredients and I'll just say, show you what they are, we've got some arborio rice and please make sure it's arborio rice. Some of the packages might say Italian style rice and that just won't do, it has to be arborio rice. We've got half a cup of Parmesan cheese, a chopped onion, and some sliced mushrooms because mushroom risotto is what we're preparing today. Uh, the seasonings will be just simply thyme, salt, and a little nutmeg. The liquids we'll be using is half a cup of white wine, a dry white wine, and two cups of mushroom broth. Now you can use uh, beef broth, you can use chicken broth, but I like the mushroom broth when we're doing mushroom risotto. Two tablespoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of butter. To slice my mushrooms, I simply cut them in half and then give them a slice with the stem and all and it just gives it a nice little shape. And now we're preparing our instant pot by just pressing the saute button and adding two tablespoons of olive oil. Once the oil has heated up, we'll be adding the chopped onions. So now we add the chopped onions and we'll let them saute for three or four minutes until they become translucent. As you can see, the onions are now soft and they're starting to get translucent. And now we're ready to add the mushrooms. Give it a good stir. The mushrooms are going to release some water because they're full of moisture. And once they release their water, if we keep sauteing it, then they will start to dry and become a little bit brown and crispy, and that's what we're looking for. I've used cremini mushrooms. I find them just a little bit more flavorful than white button mushrooms, but you can certainly use the white buttons as well. The mushrooms are nicely browned. They've shrunk in size, and we're going to just add a little bit more olive oil and we're going to add a tablespoon of butter to the pot. As the vegetables cook down, they're adding tremendous depth of flavor to the finished risotto. Now it's time to add the risotto to the bottom of the pot. I've got about a cup of risotto and give it a good stir. Now we've added that extra butter and oil because what we want to do is make sure that risotto, each of the rice kernels are coated with that wonderful flavor and we've added the butter and the oil and by adding the risotto at this stage, what we want to make sure is to coat each of the kernels of rice and as it sautés, they will become translucent. That's sealing in the flavor. Now that the kernels have been coated and toasted, we're gonna add our white wine. It's about half a cup of white wine, and you can hear that sizzle. And what we'll be doing now is deglazing the bottom of the pot, making sure that there is nothing stuck to the bottom and that there's no brown bits that's gonna interfere with the pressure cooking process. You can see the wine is cooking out and evaporating any alcohol content at the same time, intensifying the flavor of the items in there. Time to add our seasonings. We're keeping it simple with just a half a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of fresh thyme. 
thyme and mushrooms are just one of those wonderful combinations. Whenever you have mushrooms, try and add some thyme to it. You'll be happy you did. And our final step, we'll be adding our two cups of mushroom broth to the mixture and giving it again one good stir to make sure that bottom is free of any brown bits. And our last little bit of flavoring we're gonna add is some fresh ground nutmeg. I like to always have the whole nutmeg and add just a touch. And anytime I make any risotto using any ingredients, I always add a touch of nutmeg. Time to now cancel the saute button and we'll be putting the lid on to lock in position and we will pressure cook it for six minutes. We've put six minutes on our pressure cooker time and it'll take a few minutes to get up to pressure. Once it does, it'll start counting down from six to zero. And now the six minutes have counted down and we'll be doing a quick release on the risotto. I'm just gonna wait till it goes back up to one minute and we'll release it. Careful. By moving the button to venting, any steam that's left in the pot is now escaping. The button has dropped indicating that it's safe to open the lid. Now that we've opened the lid, we'll, we're gonna cancel the process and put the pot back on to saute. We're now heating up the risotto to just let any extra moisture evaporate and we'll be adding the butter, another tablespoon of butter at this stage. The risotto is a beautiful consistency now and our finishing touches, we're adding the Parmigiano Reggiano, about half a cup. We're all done and time to cancel the saute function. It's now time to plate our risotto. It looks absolutely wonderful. The creamy texture, the mushrooms, and I wish you could smell it. I promised a restaurant worthy risotto in your instant pot with just a few simple ingredients. And this is what we have. All we're going to garnish it with is a little bit more Parmesan cheese, and just an extra little sprinkling of thyme. Perfectly cooked risotto. Without all that stirring, it still has a little bit of a bite to it and just creamy, creamy lusciousness. Mm. That is delicious. I do hope you try this. It is such an easy, easy, delicious risotto. And if you do, make sure you hit subscribe. Let me know that you've tried this and I'll get back to you.